Hey everybody, it's AJ here again, and today I want to make a video on arrays in C++. Now, arrays are a way of holding multiple items of the same type. Now, for instance, now before we knew about arrays, if we wanted to hold, you know, multiple values of the same thing, we need to make a separate variable for each thing. So, like, if I needed to have two ints, I had int a, comma b, and then I could say a equals seven, and b equals ten. But what if I needed 32 integers or 100 integers? That would be pretty big and that would be pretty boring to create all those variables. So a way we can store 100 ints is in an array. array an array allows us to store multiple items of the same type. So let me create array, an array here. So first I need to sp specify the type of the array. Then I need to specify its name. I'm just going to call it array. And then I'm going to give it the array notation, which is by brackets. And then in the array notation, I'm going to give it a size. I'm going to give it a size of 100. And that's going to be good. And so what I'm saying here is in this bracket size is where I list the array size. So I can do 25. I can do 2. I can't do negative 1. I, can't, I have to list the positive size. I can list 1, 2, 3, 4. Anything greater than 1 is okay. And so we'll do 5 for now. And then... That, there you go. Now I have an array. I have an array, an array of length five that can hold integers. So how do I access elements in the array? Well, let me show you. You do the same thing where you use the variable like you would a, another variable, but instead you put the bracket notation again. You use these brackets, and what you do is you reference. No, you can reference each location in the array. So the array now has five locations, and the locations. This can be kind of tricky. Is to are stored on a zero-based basis. What do I mean by this? The locations in the array are referenced by zero, one, two, three, and four. Notice there are five locations, but five is not a location reference. I can I can only look at zero, one, two, three, or four. So if I want to access the first element in the array, it would be array zero, and now I can set it to ten. And then if I wanted to set the last element in the array, that would be array four, and then. I could set that equal to 2, I'll set the 21, and then I could do this for the other three elements as well. So let's see, I forgot 1, I forgot 2, I forgot 3. And I'll make this 11, 12, and 13. And so there you go, I got a pretty clean slate array. I've got an array declared with five elements. The first element is 10, and the first element and the last element is 21. So just to show, prove to you guys this, I'm going to loop through this array, which is very powerful, and I'm going to which is very powerful, and I'm going to uh, print out all the elements in the array. So what I want to do here is since I know the array size is five, I'm going to make a full loop from zero to five while i is less than 5, and then I'm going to see out array i and o. Okay, so what this does is I go from 0 to 4, because i will be less than 5 all the way to 4, but when it's 5, it's not, it's, 5 is not less than 5, it's equal to 5, so this condition will stop. So array will access the 0th first, second, third, and fourth element. So hopefully I print out 10, then 11, then 12, then 13, then 21. Let me give this a run. And there we go. I have a two here. Why do I have a two? And that is because I listed this as 21. Okay, back, I forgot to build the project. But there we go. So I have 10, 11, 12, 13, and I changed it to the fifth element to 200. But there's one, two, three, four, five elements, and I printed them all out with the array. So that's pretty cool. So that's uh, definitely a good beginning into arrays, but quickly I want to give you guys some cool things. So as you can see, this is pretty tedious on how I initialize the array elements. And one thing I wanted to show you guys is let's say I didn't initialize the array elements this is always good to check this is why you always initialize variables as well as anything else if I just ran this program without initializing any of the slots in the array then I'll get this I get a random number two 
I get a random 2,300,000 something, and then zero, zero, zero. And then let's see if I run it again. I get the same thing. And so that's because I, I haven't initialized the, the addresses. So the, the values have a chance to get allocated to anything in any memory position, or they can just get, they're not initialized, so junk is in them. And you may get lucky in zero, maybe that junk that's added in, as you saw there, four zeros were added there, but you don't want to count on that. So what you want to do is you always want to initialize the array. So one thing you could do is if I just put a zero, if I put a one here, what it will do is it will initialize the first element to be one, and then it will initialize the other elements to be zero. So let me show you guys, just in clarification. So I made the first element one here, and then the rest elements are zero, and I can run it again. You should definitely try this too to see if I'm right. So again, if I run it again, the no garbage values change. And then so also, if I want to initialize the second, third, fourth, and fifth element, I can simply use these other brackets. So these are curly brackets, and these are square brackets with the array notation, and that's how I can initialize an array when I declare it. So that's pretty cool, right? So as you can see here, I just ran my loop again, and I get one, two, three, four, five, because that's how I initialize the array. If I want to reference an array location, I simply do array, and then I market the location with my brackets, so four, and then I can set it equal to whatever I want. So if I set it to equal to a thousand, and then I run this program, then as you can see, I have one, two, three, four, a thousand. So that's pretty cool, right? I just was able to manipulate my program, manipulate my array, so I could store multiple values in it. Note, I can only store uh, values in this array that have the same type as it. So I can only store ints in this array. I could also make a double array. I'll call it array two, and make it 10 elements. And I can do that. And then I can store doubles in that. So I can do 1.2, 1.2, 0.4, 0.5, uh, something like that, and it's giving me an error. Du, 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 du. It's because I have an extra. I had an extra thing like that, and so I have an extra comma. And so if I run this, oh sorry, that's only printing out the first array. But let's just make this array two, and I'll make this five. Du, 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 du. If I run this, I get one point two four five, and then zero zero. So that's pretty cool. So as you can see, you must have the same, you must like a variable, you can only store what's in that, what the proper type in that variable, just like an array, you can only store elements in that array that are of the proper type, which is pretty cool. So yes, this guy, this is your tutorial on arrays, and I hope you enjoyed, I hope you guys have a great day.